It's Friday, September 24, 2010, and you are watching This Week in Linux News. So let's say you just bought a brand new Intel computer. Would you want everything to work out of the box, or would you want to have to pay them later on to get more functionality out of it? Intel has decided to do exactly that. They've decided they're going to be shipping processors with certain functionality disabled out of the box, and they're going to be selling upgrade cards at retail outlets like Best Buy and places like that for about $50 that will allow you to unlock additional functionality, like improved hyper-threading and larger cache size and things like that. It's actually been compared to buying a video game and then paying to download additional content for that game. Now, I do see a couple of possible problems with this. One, is Intel actually going to be making these downloads available for Linux? And two, inevitably someone will crack this system within a very short amount of time and people will be buying these really inexpensive processors and doing a lot of fancy things to them and Intel will lose a lot of money on the deal. Tell me what you think about it in the comment section below though. Moving right along, Pharonix.com reported on a story this week that's incredibly exciting to me. I used to play video games a lot and one of the things that's really limiting about playing games on Linux is the lack of DirectX compatibility. Well, that might all change very soon. There was an update push to the Gallium 3D driver this week that natively exposes the DirectX 10 and DirectX 11 API to Linux. It's already been pushed into the latest version of the Mesa driver, and it's going to be able to be added into Wine. The problem that might come up from this is, when Microsoft finds out about it, they will probably shut the project down in some form or fashion. It's also supposed to be kind of trivial to port this information over to the FGLRX and the proprietary NVIDIA drivers, so those of us who want to use those proprietary drivers should also be able to implement the DirectX 10 and 11 stuff in the near future. And speaking of FGLRX type things, ATI's proprietary driver did not work in Ubuntu 10.10 .10 up until yesterday. They've finally gotten it fixed and hopefully it should be running smoothly by the time Ubuntu 10.10 .10 releases, which is just about 17, 15 days from now. Wow. In other Ubuntu development related news, they added a patch to Evolution this week to put in a sent from Ubuntu message on your signature by default. Now that's at least somewhat understandable, but they decided to turn this feature on by default. Now, if you know people like I know people, they really don't like their default settings changed in most cases, and this was the same way. So it took the Ubuntu developers less than a day to realize that they really needed to switch it back. So that sent from Ubuntu message that was there, it's still there, it's just turned off now. Okay, let's talk about some software releases for just a little bit. OpenShot version 1.2.2 released this week, skipping over a couple of version numbers, I believe. According to the release notes, they've been working on improving stability, they've added 3D titles using Blender, they've added some new transitions, some new audio and video effects, such as a chroma hold effect that Caden Live has frankly had for quite a while now. Basically, it's just supposed to be an improved experience overall, so I'll go ahead and download it and give it a try, and I'll let you guys know what I think of it in an upcoming video. In addition, another new piece of software was released this week. It's called Granola. Basically, Granola is a new power-saving utility for your computer. It taps into the dynamic voltage and frequency scaling, or DVFS, portions of your system. These are supposed to be available on most new Intel and AMD-based systems. You might have to go into your BIOS to enable it, though. However, if you go ahead and install the software and try it out, it will tell you if it's able to be used or not. I installed it on my Arch Linux system earlier, and it did give me some indications that it was going to be working. And it actually gives you specific statistics on what kind of power savings you're going to get and what sort of money savings that's going to equate to. Another new piece of software that released this week is called Hot 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 H O T O T. Not sure how to pronounce that. I kind of like saying Hot 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 Hot. It's still in an early alpha. It is a Twitter client that is native to Linux, and it kind of looks and feels like an iPhone application. It's got the buttons across the bottom that allow you to scroll between different panels of your Twitter application. I tried it out briefly earlier. It looks pretty interesting. It's got the ability to add extensions to it, so I'm gonna be doing some more testing on that. Might make a video on that as well in the near future. And let's move on to a distro release. This week, Archbang Linux 2010.09 released. I've been meaning to try out Archbang. I've told a lot of people that I would do a review of it, just haven't gotten around to it yet. However, I did put out a video earlier today, if you haven't seen it already, click the annotation or the link in the doobly-doo of how to install Arch Linux from the beginning to the, the you are installed and you're getting ready to 
to add the graphical interface. Feel free to watch that and let me know what you think. All right, now it's tablet news time. Dell has open sourced the version of Android that they created for their Dell Streak tablet. When they first created the Streak, they got a lot of flack from the community for not open sourcing the code and letting the developers have access to it. Well, now it's open, developers can do what they want to with it. As a side note to that, the head of Dell, Michael Dell himself, has confirmed that they're going to be creating a Dell 7-inch tablet, just like the Streak, but a little bit bigger, sort of the cross between a phone and a tablet, which will hopefully go along with Google's idea of Froyo being good for tablets, but not tablets, but phones? Yes. And to close things up, let's talk about Severed Fifth. I've mentioned Severed Fifth before. It's actually a project created entirely by John O'Bacon, the community manager of Ubuntu. They've announced their new album is going to be released on October 11th, the day after Ubuntu 10.10 .10 releases. I believe the date's more coincidental than anything, but go ahead, check out their website, SeveredFifth.com. They've got their first album already out there completely free, and they've also got a fair pay system set up. So if you like the music and you want to help support the band, you can donate to them from the website. But that's all I've got for you today. As always, thank you for watching and I will see you next time.